Mm -mm -mm. This topic might be the entire show, uh, but I'm going to try and break it up in pieces. Uh, I saw a headline, Stephen A. takes shot bah! at independent creators on the internet. Really? Did he? Uh, while literally being in their world, <laughs> like on the internet. <laughs> it's crazy. Oh, man, let's talk about this. Um, this is still spurned from that Dan Lebatard interview that was provocative. That was great. It's good to see when you, you know, see two friends who are also peers, who've also went through the journey and experience together, major media, mass media, right? And also now one seems fully engulfed in the independent space, Dan Lebatard, right? Even though he's still major and he's still got major brands and sponsorships. And then Stephen A., who's still major mass media, but at the same time, there's a reason why he has a podcast as well. And he has major support as well. Um, the first thing I want everyone to understand is we need to stop with the slander. Let's stop. Let's start there. Stop with the slander. Let's start there. Because I, I'm noticing that everyone is trying to find their factions and find their grouping and place blame. All these same traits and attributes that human beings have been doing for thousands and thousands of years. And it usually comes from fear and anxiety, insecurity. Let's talk about it. Um, have you noticed all the labels? Okay, major mass media, right? I'm saying it. Uh, then you got podcast creators and independent creators, you know, clickbait and then um, debaters and embracing debate, et cetera. All these labels and associations, right? To group people because someone has to be blamed for whatever is changing, the evolution of this media. That's what's happening right here. So now, since we're trying, we're trying to label these things and trying to make associations with these things, because really, we're just trying to figure out where do we fit and where is it going. We have to put a face to it. We got to put names to it, right? We got to blame somebody, right? This is changing because they did that. This is changing because they are in charge. And that's not fair to Stephen A. Stephen A is the face of media, but he's not the cause of whatever you want to say the issues with media are. Um, those issues, are, a lot of us put our hands in, that, in the middle of that huddle and say, break. A lot of us contributed to that play. A lot of us contributed to that world. And I'm going to walk you through this in terms of the experience. Um, let's start here. He's not the reason sports television seems to be, at least in taste, opinion, even ratings in decline. Let's be real. It's, it's in decline because there are more options. It's in decline because that's a model that has been tried and tested, and it's true. But it's probably run its course in terms of the way that they're doing it in spirit. Have two people, and it's formulaic, right? Two people. You wake up in the morning, you get a list of topics, and we go through those topics and we say, which ones do you agree upon? And you agree upon these, right? You agree on these, and you put them to the left. And then you say, which ones do you disagree with? And you put them to the right, and you're like, those are the ones we're going to talk about. <laughs> and maybe we throw one of those in there from the ones you agree on. And that's it. And we just go, right? And you're like, damn, that's how they do it? Yeah. They don't make you make up an answer. Now, I have been in rooms before where I've even said, look, I'm on the fence, so I could go either way. That's as close as you get to it being uh, fake or not authentic. It's never Marcellus. Do you think Tom Brady is great or sorry? Um, I think he's great. Well, can you go on air and say he's sorry? No, <laughs> they never do that. But if you're like, oh, yeah, I to whoever you're talking about, They'll say, oh, can you argue he's sorry? And you're like, well, yeah, because I think he's kind of all right. He's not great. He's not sorry. I can kind of lean this way because I'm on the fence. That's as fake as it gets. I've never seen it faker than that, just FYI. Okay, so now let's talk about Stephen A. Smith since he's the face of all this because he makes the most because he's the biggest and baddest, right? He passed Skip up. He passed Colin up. I mean, let's be real. Who, who makes more than him doing what he does? No one. Nobody, 12 million reported, right? Uh, but then he's in a place where he's taking all the hits because if the industry is in suppression, if the industry's in decline, then the face of it has to take the hits. 
has to take the blame, right? So we're blaming Stephen A for something. Even though Stephen A started, what, 1993, journalist, uh, worked his butt off, as he says. I'm a black man with a resume. Don't know what the hell black got to do with that, but uh, he's a black man with a resume. Like, you got a resume, it's all good. And you're at the top, so I don't understand um, the black part. But it's all good. He says that, and those are his words. Um, and he also says that people don't deserve a seat at the table that don't have that resume, um, that are clickbaiters, that are independent creators. Um, and that's where the problems lie. Uh, people hold on to theirs, you know, tightly, you know, they hold on to it in desperation. And Stephen A is still holding on to his position as the king on the throne. And in that attempt to hold on to that, let's be real. He's noticing that things are changing, right? That they are taking shots at the throne. They are throwing rocks at his crown. And some of them are connecting. Why? And I'm so blessed to be on both sides of this, if not all sides of this. There's probably more than just two. Because I was that guy. I was Stephen A. Smith. I remember working with him first time ever. We were on the best damn sports show, I think, in 2001. Yeah, he left me behind. <laughs> Stephen A. <Aidman. laughs> I've just been co-hosting, co-hosting, co-hosting. Go get it, Stephen A. I love it. Um, the thing is, Stephen A. knows that now he has to have a toe in this independent space. And he noticed it because his bosses told him he had to have it. Let's talk about this transition because there was a day, and I remember it, when ESPN, where I was working at the time, placed a big bet. And I wouldn't say an early bet, but it was a big bet because it was major media saying we have to lean into social media. And at that time, it was Twitter. Like, everyone get on Twitter. And everyone go on Twitter and just try to get you a fan base and get people to watch the shows and, you know, give them little behind-the-scenes peeks at your life and, and content. And obviously, Skip Bayless ran with that. Like, Skip Bayless literally would tweet out his show and then go on air and do the show. And people were watching it, right? So it worked, um, but they didn't bet on the independent space in terms of content creation at that time. I think that caught them by surprise. I think major media was caught by surprise of how many people would just be at home like me now. Uh, but then like 2013, those early adopters or whatever is a Joe Rogan, 2017, a Pat McAfee, whatever it may be, those guys. They didn't think that they would go home and actually not only create content, but gain such massive audiences greater than the ratings suggest. Let's be real. Uh, the ratings is tough. Nielsen is still dragging their feet, and I don't think they're doing it intentionally, but it's kind of hard to curate all this. You got to imagine there's a linear cable uh, stream, right? There's a linear cable watcher. And that person sitting at home like, oh, man, I'm watching ESPN. Cool. And they're getting that typical rate. And do you know for like per hour, uh, the most that people watch is 15 minutes? Like per hour, the most. And that's like an extreme. Uh, ratings, obviously, all across the board are suppressed and down because we just got more options, right? And it's probably less interesting to watch somebody up there who has a corporate brand behind them saying something that you're like, eh, if you were with your boys, you said it a little different, right? And on the internet, you will find that person. <laughs> He's going to say exactly how you're thinking it. Um, so all across the board, ratings are down. And so then the bet was on Twitter. Then the bet was on like on Instagram and like make yourself more glam and make yourself more popular. Right. But the bet wasn't on YouTube. And did y'all notice all of a sudden the same show and shows and personalities that were on their show? Let's say first take all of a sudden all the clips are on YouTube. And then all of a sudden the actual hosts the co-hosts were also on YouTube. Now you need a podcast to go with your show. Look at FS1. What's what's right with Nick Wright? Or what's wrong with Nick Wright, excuse me. Um, and I love Nick Wright. That dude's a beast. Uh, what's wrong with Nick Wright, right? Uh, Skip Bayless show. Uh, Club Shay Shay, right? And that's the bet now. And they're hedging their bet because they were realizing, hey, everybody's not tuning in to these shows. 
the 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 ratings at FS1. Let's use those because I know those because I was there last. Um, average viewership for Undisputed, the biggest show, one fifty two hundred thousand max. Woo! Club Shay Shay got a million plus subscribers himself, and those views every time I look is millions. Mm. Then you 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 don't. You can't make the apples to apples comparison because you would really have to say what would happen if they put Undisputed exclusively on the Internet versus Club Shay Shay, which is exclusively on the Internet. But you get the point. Like they're like, dog, people are tuning in to Club Shay Shay more than they tune into Undisputed. And remember, that's only for 15 minutes max. Guess who knows this? Advertisers, sponsors. And they're like, uh, we used to bet on social media and the social media influencers. And, you know, we want to move our product not only on commercials, but y'all fast forward through commercials through DVR and TiVo. And then that changed into let's just put bets on like these guys endorsing our product to now. And they're like, no, let them have a podcast. Meet them where the people are, direct to consumer, and then we'll place ads in there, or we'll just sponsor the entire podcast. Y'all catching all this? It happens fast. Now, when it happens fast to you, you're like, what do I do? Where's my next step? Where's solid footing? For Stephen A to take these shots, you can see not only is he like, yo, I'm the biggest, baddest, I can take these shots, but also I got to plan my next move. And I think his next move is what he's doing he's doing the podcast and you're gonna see more and more effort more and more support more and more lean into that podcast because that's where the people are let me take you through it all the fears the anxieties not only from these i guess you can call them the networks um but also from the actual talent the networks are sitting there like, yo, we own these socials. And this is one thing I didn't like. This is one thing in my last deal that uh, made me say I have to move on. I knew that everything and everyone was going to digital, to going to streaming, online, internet, et cetera. You could tell because why you offer me to do a podcast when you offer me to just do a show four years ago. So four years ago, my contract was just do speak for yourself. And then I was like, ah, I want to do radio because I love doing radio. I knew Max went to first take, duh. But I was like, I could do my own radio or I could do it with somebody else. Ah, we want you just to be fresh for Speak for Yourself. So we're going to pay you handsomely just to do one show. All right. In those four years, that conversation switched because Club Shay Shay came out in 2020, I think. Skip just came out last year. Nick Wright came out last year. Tons of others. And then the next contract, it was like Marcellus. You gonna do a podcast? What, what? You just told me I couldn't do radio, and you never even mentioned a podcast just four years ago. Hmm. Are you really looking out for me, or are you like, yo, this bottom line is shifting to other spaces, right? So I caught that, and I wasn't going to be played in that moment. And I don't think they were trying to play me, but they also weren't being explicit uh, because they own those socials, right? You can get into a rev share deal, and they offered that, but they own the socials. And to the tune of, of all these guys that you're talking about, there's one that finally went back, and I can't say his name because I protect the guilty, but there was one who went back and fought for a percentage of the social media accounts, and he got a percentage. But they're sitting there like, yo, y'all ain't even catching this. All those clips, money to the network. Now, they pay you a big, handsome check so that you don't even think about those things, but you should think about those things. Cause why? That's your independence. That is your money. That is something that you own. That's your IP. Like you're doing the show and you're putting out all the content and then they have all the ownership. And that's where the rub is. Let's talk about the security that comes from that big fat paycheck to just go up there, talk for a couple hours and then go home and do it again tomorrow, rinse and repeat. That's what that gives you, security, but you're an employee to the fullest. You don't own the socials. You don't own the show. If they want to wake up tomorrow like they are, NFL Network or ESPN Disney, and say, hey, we got layoffs, bye-bye, peace. There's no layoffs for the YouTuber, right? <laughs> There's no layoffs for the independent creator. He just, if he don't want to work tomorrow, he doesn't work tomorrow. If he does, he does, right? 
And that's a big difference. So you got the security of the network job and you have also the big check that comes with that security. Oh, just comfortable. I ain't got to worry about Jack ratings, whatever. Y'all figure that out. I'm trying my damnness and that's all I could do. But you don't have any, and I mean any ownership. Not a single soul has a percentage in ESPN. Not a single soul owns a percentage of FS1 or Fox. Stop playing. Over here, you can own it all. But what's 100% of nothing, right? And that's the risk of independence. If you don't pop, <laughs> it doesn't work, right? You can have all the freedom in the world, all the independence in the world. But where's the revenue? Where's the security? And that's the rub. And that's why you're seeing all of this new media versus old media. You're seeing major mass media and networks versus independent creators. That's why you're seeing this crip and blood kind of like gang fight right now. And everybody trying to really stake their territory. They're trying to do it because things are changing. There's an evolution going on right now. Um, let me walk you through how this all started in my eyes. Um, Stephen A is taking these hits unnecessarily because Stephen A just climbed to the top of the mountain. But how did that mountain get created? I was there like day one. Jamie Horowitz, look him up if you don't know who he is. Um, former ESPN executive and Fox. I think he was the president of Fox, uh, FS1 for a minute there. Um, and Jamie Horowitz, good friend. Uh, I really respected his work, especially day one because he took me under his wing um, and creating shows like First Take, uh, Sports Nation, you know, et cetera. I think he created Undisputed too. I want to say yes. Um, point being, he was like the, the face of Embrace Debate. Basically, you guys need to get up there and we need to have some, some contrast. Y'all need to go at it. Let's bring the barbershop to life, whatever you want to call it, Embrace Debate. And that took the industry and that took individuals on different roads because it popped. So in the industry, all of a sudden you got all these gremlins, right? Yo, yo, they popping over there. How are they popping? Well, they're arguing. Oh, well, let's argue over here. But if it's not authentic or you don't have the proper personalities or the right chemistry, it's not going to pop. Two people arguing. What y'all arguing over after a certain point? You're like, and who is arguing? And then you just start to tune out. But it popped. I mean, it popped. And I I wasn't a part of those shows. I would go on first take. I would go on. But that wasn't my spirit. I'm not a debater. I'm a discusser. <laughs> That's why y'all say, damn, this dude talks so much. Yeah, because I like to discuss stuff. I like to talk. I like to make you think. And then you chime in. And then we all get smarter, right? I'm not sitting here talking at you, talking to you. I ain't got all the answers, even though I act like it sometimes. <laughs> but the industry went on that road. Let's embrace debate. Not only with the show, but just industry-wide, right? And individuals started to figure out, like, yo, I got to really pop. Instead of saying, oh, he's a good player, I got to say, damn it, ain't nobody better. You see the difference? He's a good player. No, he's a great player. Damn it, ain't nobody better. <laughs> and that's where it all went. Hot sauce on everybody's burrito. So then... They went those ways and they placed those bets and they realized that, okay, it's time to place different bets. The individuals and the entities, the entities right now are looking at everything and saying, we got to get to the people direct to consumer. It's just as simple as that. Y'all hate to say it. There's no other way to look at it. And the, the individuals are starting to come uh, myself included. I just frankly said, and I bring it to y'all raw. I bring it to y'all real. I was making 1.9 million at FS1. And my next deal, they were offering me like one one. That was it was probably gonna be a little less haircut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause I was not gonna do the same show. I couldn't do speak anymore. Um y'all know what speak is now. <laughs> it's, it's a little ice skating, right? It's a little fluffier. Uh, they bet on Acho as they should. Acho is half my age. Looks half as good as me, not me stop. Oh, that's my dog. Uh, he's half my age. I mean, he wants to do that, and he wants to do those type of shows. Um, I wanted to do this, and I told him that from hello, and that's why we had to say goodbye. But also, um, the one one was going to be like to join first things first. So I had to, you know, take some money away. I was like, whatever. Uh, but the, the bet was that show has three other people. So they were like, yeah, we can't pay you the same. 
I didn't go all the way through with negotiations. I probably could have got that up a little more. Um, but I just that was their initial offer, like one one. I was like, ah, I don't know. and I was like, yeah. And then I, I realized through just looking in my neighborhood, my conversations with people I know, independent creators I know, independent creating agencies, and I know people that represent people on the internet and them people that represent them are rich the people on the internet are wealthy <laughs> i'm like dog i got neighbors dog i play a lot of football and been in the media for a long time and there's youtubers in my neighborhood like dog i'm like dude, what the? you go by their house like at midnight and they live in these little content houses and stuff and they're just lights on and they just in there just plowing through stuff and i'm like dog these little kids out here eating but i'm not scared of them you know you can't beat them join them um, in that kind of respect, but long story short, I saw 1.1 to whatever I was going to get them up to one, three, one, five, and even one nine. I was like, dog, the money not worth staying here. If that's the money, because I had felt that no matter how much I was going to make, I can make more here. That was the money conversation. Stephen A makes 12 million. Woo! Like, first of all, I ain't going to get to Stephen A level. Just be real. I'm not going to go there. Like, whatever it takes to go there. And there is a certain formula for that. You notice that the top three dogs, Skip, Stephen A., Colin, never played ball. So that means they have a different investment. They're invested into journalism. I'm invested into the athlete experience and into athletics, professional athletics. Some stuff I just don't do. Some stuff I won't say. Some stuff I won't, I won't go there. And they do. I mean, they go all the way there because they're not invested in it the same. Let's just be real. And that's the industry rewards that. That's what culture is. This culture of sports media rewards that and that I couldn't do. So I was like, I ain't going to make Stephen A money. And even if I do, you know how much McAfee making? <laughs> Good Lord. So I take top dog to top dog. That's how I do it. Like apples to apples. Who's the top dog on this independent track and who's the top dog on the major mass media track y'all know what it is <laughs> McAfee making three four times much as much as Stephen A that's why the industry is going where McAfee is that's why Stephen A is now where McAfee is at least one foot there and then the other foot in first take damn that's good that's a balancing act now I should have <laughs> I should have balanced it out like that but I went all in on this so I just wanted to hip y'all to that. <clears throat> I wanted to hip y'all. You hear that frog? I wanted to hip y'all to that because I think a lot of stuff right now is up in the air in terms of the blame, the labels, and who is in charge. And I think right now people are making money and they're realizing why not have ownership with it as well, right? Money and power. Not just money. And even Stephen A is coming to that realization, it seems like. But taking shots at the independent creators, Stephen A is above that, and he should stay above that. I hope he does, because you're just going to look weak. Like, that's like saying, oh, man, our music was better than y'all music. Like, dog, whatever you saying, old man, nobody give a damn. <laughs> like, is it selling? Do people like it? You got to get with the times. And you can see by all these moves that others are getting with the times.